All right, guys, today we're going to be doing some good old-fashioned shooting with one of my all-time favorite lever guns. This is a vintage Marlin 1893 safety. You can see there. This one's serial number puts it in 1900, and it's in 3855. So, but what we're also going to be doing out here is we're going to be talking about some changes to the YouTube channel that are... Uh, going to be happening here. Change is inevitable, and this isn't the part where I'm going to start telling you that if you guys don't go over to my Patreon and donate, that my channel is going to go away. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's not why I started the channel. I started it just to kind of have fun with it, and I liked recording uh, myself. But as everybody knows, the ads for YouTube have changed. It's not a secret. Everybody's ma everybody and their brothers made a video about it, and uh, that's affected my channel greatly. I went from being able to help with range fees and ammo to being non-existent. So there are going to be some changes in the way that I run my channel, but I'm not going away or anything like that. Uh, the content is probably going to expand some and do some of my other hobbies and whatnot and interests that you'll see. It'll kind of be like, a, I want to say like a vlog channel, but not really like a vlog channel because I'm going to have just different stuff obviously a lot of guns as being my primary interest but uh, some changes are happening like I said changes is inevitable and uh, I do have a patreon but it's going to be run more like a uh, like a street performers change bucket you know if you if you like what I'm doing then you go and you put some change in the bucket if you want to help out with like I said range fees and ammunition but I'm not going to be, like I said, threatening that my channel is going to go away if X amount of subscribers don't go over to Patreon and donate. So, anyway, now that all that's done, let's take this beautiful turn-of-the-century lever gun downrange and let's see what we can do. Alright guys, let's see what the old girl can do. I don't know if I uh, mentioned it earlier, but again, 3855 is what she's chambered in. That's a 250 grain bullet. And uh, these things are known for excellent accuracy because of the long bullet. So let's see what it'll do up close against some water bottles. Oh yeah, put some nice holes through them. Now let's finish them off with our Colt 1862. 61, my bad. Oh, and he completely missed it. There we go. Alright, 61 Navy. That 38.55 ain't no joke. Alright guys, here we are with the old girl. Like I was telling you before, the uh, 3855 cartridge was originally invented as a Ballard target round in the turn of the century, 1880s, and uh, it has a reputation for being extremely accurate long range. Originally loaded with black powder, that's where the nomenclature comes from, 3855. These are loaded with uh, SR4759 smokeless powder, which does an excellent job at approximating black powder velocities at black powder pressures, but being smokeless. So here we are at uh, 200 yards, and let's see what we can do. This is the uh, first time I've actually ever shot this gun at this distance. It's got the uh, old school buckhorn sights. As you can see, this particular one was the barrel was shortened by a gunsmith. These originally had 26 inch barrels. This one was shortened to 21 inches, kind of an odd length, but I think they went with that to go with the seven rounds in the magazine that'll carry. And it has an old school brass bladed front sight, as you can see there. And uh, while it looks pretty awesome, it's not the finest target sight in the world, so let's see what we can do at this distance. It is drilled and tapped for a tang sight. I just don't have one. So let's uh, see what we can do. There you go. 
go. Second shot on steel. It's a beautiful sound. that one and that's it now that front sight pretty much covers up that red ipsic target completely from this distance so we've got a few more rounds here let's go ahead and load them up and that's it beautiful marlin safety 3855 special smoke with steel. That's a beautiful gun. Now, got a few rounds left. If you look downrange, 250 yards, you'll see we have a one gallon water jug. It's gonna be challenging, but let's see if we can hit that thing. Oh man, first freaking shot. Boy, I tell you, the Winchesters, they had the romanticism and the uh, the cowboy age, I guess you could say. But if you were to find me in the West or on the plains at the turn of the century, the 1900s, anywhere from 1893 on, the Marlin Safety 1893 and 3855 would have been what I had. I just love these guns. Like I said, they don't have the romanticism that the Winchesters have around them. But as you see here, they're smooth as glass. They're strong action, stronger than the Winchesters were. And uh, just a dang fine shooting gun. And uh, actually, like I said, other than a few modern things I have on me like a watch, if you were to find me in 1900, this is pretty much what I'd be looking like. I'd have my Marlin 1893 safety, and then I would probably be carrying a Colt cap and ball pistol just like this one. You know, by 1900, these things were getting to be definitely on the outdated side. However, you could still buy commercially loaded 36 caliber paper cartridges in 1900. So there were still plenty of people using them because you could still go to a hardware store and buy paper cartridges all the way up until about 1920, I believe. 1920 or 1930 is when the uh, production of 36 caliber uh, cartridge ammunition for cap and ball revolvers finally ceased so rewind to 1900 if I was there you can pretty much bet that this is what I'd be carrying so let's go down range and take a few shots a little closer and we'll shoot a little more out of this little 36 all right guys it's about the turn of the century we're out in the wild west you know it's the west is one but it's still largely unpopulated you never know when you might run into Sasquatch especially from uh, pizza box. <laughs> let's back up to where my front sight is covering the entire Sasquatch and let's see what we can do to him. That's good pizza, by the way. All right, guys, here we are at a simulated, I'd say about 100 yards going off of how big he is in my front sight. And, you know, let's just say we're out west and we see Sasquatch down there coming right at us less than 100 yards away. Let's see what the old 1893 Marlin can do to her. Him. And just for good measure,
Well, perhaps the uh, shots from my Colt here would be the warning shots, but the rifle took care of him. <laughs> All right, guys, let's finish off the Sasquatch with my favorite cap and ball, the 61 Navy. go as you can see we dealt with him nicely All right, guys, thanks for coming with me and shooting this beautiful and original Marlin 1893. Really awesome gun. And uh, for hanging out today with me at the range. Just wanted to uh, finish out the video by saying, yes, change is coming. You'll probably see some uploads uh, coming up that are not typical to my channel. I'm wanting to diversify now. So things like my other interests, fountain pens, watches, movies, you know, other things that I find interesting. So there, there's going to be some changes and whatnot, but the primary focus is still going to be guns, antique firearms specifically, black powder, that kind of thing. But uh, there'll just be some other things thrown in. and It's not good, it's not bad, it's just change, and change is inevitable. So I appreciate you guys coming along with me all these years, and like I was saying, down in the description box will be the links to all this stuff, my Patreon, the Sasquatch Pizza, just about everything. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, by the way, as I upload a lot of cool stuff to Instagram, and that's pretty much it. And uh, I think Sasquatch needs one more. Thanks for coming along, guys. Catch you later.